Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here again for one of our mass making sessions and we are up to week number 168, would you believe? So for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. So we are rerunning week number 68, so week number 168. And what we are making today is little envelope pockets. Now these are probably the easiest thing um, that we will make in our mass making, to be honest, when I rewatched the video this morning to give myself a recap of, you know, what I needed to be making, I actually couldn't believe it, they were so easy. So um, yeah, all you're going to need if you want to mass make along with me is you're going to need some envelopes. Now I have chosen, you know, tall envelopes, long envelopes. Um, I don't know really why, but they just seem to be what I have most of. Now, I have also bought along, I think, one square envelope. So I'm going to give it a try with a square one, although now I can't. Oh, perhaps, perhaps I didn't in the end. Um, I was going to say I was going to try it along with a square one, but obviously I'm making that up and I haven't got a square one at all. You probably could do it with a square one. Um, you know, I think that would work fine because all we're technically going to be doing is covering the envelope and then cutting, you know, cutting a slot um, to use as a pocket. So if you had a square one, you just would cut literally straight along the top edge, if you see what I mean. Um, so anyway, I digress. So what you're going to need is a bunch of envelopes. Now, like I say, I've bought along a variety of sizes, but they are all slightly more rectangular rather than square. I've included these ones as well because, to be honest, you could also use um, these. Now, these are those 7 by 5 envelopes, the type that you would get like in a card making pack. Um, but you could easily make them from these as well. So I've brought those along as well. You're going to need something to spread your glue if, you know, if you like to do those. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. That's not a good start to the video. Um, I will be using Anita's Tacky Glue. That's my go-to glue that I like to use. Hopefully it's not going to give us too many problems today. And because that's a wet glue, that's why I will need a glue spreader. If you use a glue stick, you might not need a glue spreader. And for my glue spreader, I just use an old kind of, you know, gift card or something like that. And then you're going to need some decorative papers to cover your pieces with. Now, again, I am using digitals because that's what I predominantly have these days. If you don't have digitals, that's absolutely fine. You can use scrapbook papers, you could use book pages, you could use, you know, sheet music, whatever you like, wrapping paper even. Um, the only thing that I wouldn't recommend is anything a bit too thick. Um, so if you're using scrapbook paper, I would favour kind of the thinner scrapbook papers rather than the thicker ones. Only because when you glue it on, you know, when you're kind of then using your pocket, if they're quite thick and they're not glued right to the edge, you're going to have then a sort of gap lifting effect where if you're using quite thin paper, that won't really happen so much. I hope that kind of makes sense, um, you know, what I'm talking about. So mine are printed on 102 GSM. Now, regular copy paper is roughly 70 GSM. This is slightly thicker than that. So it's not a thick paper by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just slightly heavier than a regular copy paper. And then you're going to need some scissors. Now, you may like to have a circle punch if you want to put thumb holes. Um, again, that's an optional kind of thing. And then you may like to have, um, you know, a variety of things to decorate with. I bought along my snippet roll, that one that we used with the vintage book pages. Um, just because I thought that that might be, or, you know, these are the um, famous painting ones. Um, that might be nice to decorate them with, I don't know. Um, and I think that's probably pretty much all that you're going to need. Now, obviously, if you don't like cutting freehand, you may prefer to use a paper trimmer. I'm just going to be using scissors. So, like I say, these are the simplest thing on the planet. So, I'm just going to get straight started. And, um, yeah, I probably only need to demonstrate probably even just once, to be honest, because they're so easy. But I will probably just run you through twice. So, all you're going to do is you're going to take your blank envelope. Now, you're going to glue your flap, whoops, glue your flap down as the first stage. So, press that down using my tissue there to press that down and then you're going to cut your envelope down in the size of the pocket that you would like 
Now this is where, if you have a square envelope, what I was talking about is, you know, pretend this was a square, you would probably want to cut it straight along the top edge, if that makes sense, so that it's going to be as big a pocket as you can get. Obviously, because this is a rectangular one, I've got more options. So I could make this a tall pocket by cutting, you know, pretty much straight along the top there. I could make it a, you know, stumpier pocket. I could make it a sort of midway pocket, you know, however you like. So I'll probably do a variety of sizes through this video. Um, but, you know, just to kind of know that you can then chop and change your, you know, your sizes around. So I've not made a good job of that. What was I saying about using a paper trimmer? Yeah, I don't even have a paper trimmer. So I'm completely, completely stuck just cutting by hand, even if it's not going well. Now I'm going to keep these because, of course, we can use these for something else at a, at a oops, later stage. And then all you're going to do is you're going to take your paper, your decorative paper, and then you're going to just cover your pocket with the decorative paper. So this is my brown bunnies paper. And I'm just going to literally cut it or fold it to size. Now, again, you may want to have a, you know, a border around your envelope or you may want to have it flush with your envelope. It's completely up to you. And again, I might do some and some. Um, I don't know which I prefer, to be honest. I think just, you know, sometimes it's nice to have the border showing of the envelope and sometimes it's nice to not have the border showing. So this one here, I think probably will be one with the border showing just because of my rubbish cutting. So I have folded mine around the envelope. For me, that's a nice way to, you know, gauge the size. Um, of course, you can obviously, you know, measure and kind of draw around it. You could glue it on and cut around it, however you like, really. But I quite like to do it like that. Now, as you can see, I haven't quite cut it straight, so it's a little bit off on that edge. It doesn't really bother me. Nobody's going to be kind of studying it that much. So just then cover your envelope with your decorative paper. Obviously, oops, obviously you want quite a bit of glue on there. Like that. And then you're just going to glue that down here. Oh, and straight away, I've <laughs> made a mistake here because obviously this was supposed to be a pocket up that way. Obviously, as you can see, what I have now done is I've glued it on that way because I was obviously dictated by the butterflies. So I've now got a side brace pocket, but that's the beauty of these pockets. They're very versatile and so you can make a bunch of, um, you know, landscape and a bunch of portrait ones so they're going to work just as well now obviously as you can see i have got my border going around here so what i could do is just obviously ink up the edge just to get a little bit of color going on around there because my envelope was a white one so i just distress ink around there like that now, obviously, I'm not going to bother doing the back because I would obviously glue this down into a, you know, onto a page. So I'm going to leave the black back like that and that would glue down. So I would then probably glue it on, as I've done this as a, you know, a portrait one. I would glue it on three sides like that. So I would then have my pocket here. And then because I haven't glued this side, I would also have a pocket that side. So it's working then like a little double, double pocket. So that's quite a nice way to do them, actually, you know, doing the portrait ones. So that's all there is to them. So we'll do another one. And this time I will try and remember to actually do it, you know, the right way up. So we take our envelope. We glue the flap down. Like that. Okie dokie. Gluing that down. And then you're going to cut your envelope approximately where you want the pocket to be. So I'm going to go again, sort of similar sort of place like that. Going straight the way across. Okay, now I'm going to try and remember to obviously do this up this way. So, yep, I can just take the other part of my same paper. And again, I'm just going to have it with a border. That just, for me, you know, just makes it kind of a little bit easier when... Um, measuring it out I think so just going to have it like that 
And again, I just fold that down, gauging roughly where I need that to be, like that. Okay. And hopefully you can see now why we're not wanting to use too thick a paper because of that lifting effect that I tried to describe and I'm not sure whether it actually came across to, to anyone what I was actually meaning. Um, but hopefully now that we've done one, you can kind of see what I mean. So this one here, and then we can go straight over here. Like that, okay. I'll just cut along that fold. Like that, okay. There we go. Just check how straight I've cut that. Probably not great, but again, you know, it doesn't really matter. And then just glue that down like that. Now this little um, piece of paper actually has got one of the brown bunnies actually, oh no, sorry, the butterfly on there. I thought, sorry, I thought I'd cut the piece with the bunny. And I was just going to say that, you know, obviously if I didn't want to do a bunny themed pattern, you know, or piece of ephemera, then I would just cover the bunny up. So, I mean, same here, you know, if I didn't want to kind of have that butterfly showing, I'd just now cover cover that butterfly up. But I mean, it's quite a nice kind of neutrally, neutrally based paper. And again, obviously this was from the brown bunnies kit. So again, just ink around there. It's obviously got a bit of blue here. So I've got just some dark, dark inking where it's picked up on the glue, but that's fine. Just go around there like that. There we go. And then obviously I'm going to be keeping this as a, you know, a land, landscape pocket. So for instance here, I could just put a thumb hole. Now this is a one and a half inch circle punch. So I'd put it in here. Okay, judge by eye, hoping that that's, you know, approximately halfway-ish. I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be perfect, but... Okay, and then obviously on the inside, you could then just either ink the inside if you're putting your thumb hole so you don't have just glaring white. Or what I think is quite nice is then take your paper, so you've got your leftover scraps of paper here. Okay, and then... Hmm, yeah, I'll have to go this way, I think. Oops. squish that down there and then you could line the inside of your envelope to match the outside which I think looks really really pretty so like that okay and then just check I've got that the right size yep so then I could just glue that in Oops. that and obviously you don't have to be quite so you know precise with the glue because it's all going to be hidden mm, slide that in come on oh come on come on come on there we go right squish that down like that and then you know just for good measure kind of just ink along that top bit so then you've got your thumb hole, but you've also got your matching paper inside. So that looks very pretty, doesn't it? I mean, obviously, if I didn't put a thumb hole, I would probably, let, um, you know, edge that with some lace or something on the edge. Let me just demonstrate. Find a suitable piece of lace. Here we go. So if it were on this one, you know, the lace would go across here, that type of thing. So that is literally all there is to them. I mean, they just could not be any easier, could they? So let's just kind of crack on and we'll just do literally a whole bunch of them. And I will do them sort of assembly line style, i.e. all stages together, if that makes sense. So all of my gluing the flaps down, then all of my cutting, then all of the sticking of the decorative paper and so on. So yeah, let's just kind of relax into it and yeah, have a nice time and have a catch up. So. Obviously, I haven't filmed now. This is my first video that I filmed for um, two and a half, two and a half weeks, I think. Yeah, two and a half weeks, because obviously I was away for two weeks. Didn't film on the last, um, last 
day or the last two days anyway last two days I think because I was obviously packing and then getting ready and things like that so um yeah for me it's obviously been yeah two and a half weeks so I always feel slightly nervous when I come back to do a video and I know that sounds crazy but if anyone out there who does videos you know just share below is this just me or do we all feel like that you know if we oops if we haven't filmed for a little while I mean I film obviously every day every single day normally I'm filming and um you know obviously I upload a video every single day so you know I'm doing this all the time but it's so shocking how quickly you do get out of it you know just literally a couple of weeks of not filming and then you're like oh my goodness oh my goodness you know feeling super nervous it's very weird how quickly that happens and I just you know yeah I wonder if I'm alone with that or whether everybody feels a bit like that but yeah it, it definitely that's something that's always kind of happened to me if I've had you know a couple of weeks of breaking or off filming or even you know a few days sometimes it can take a while to get back in the swing of it so um yeah let me know below if you film do you have that same experience or is it just me so yeah so I hope everybody has had a good couple of weeks I hope you've all stayed well I hope you've all you know had nice time had nice craft projects going on you know had some fun and yeah I hope that you've all been um enjoying this this run up to December mania you know where it all kind of starts with the madness for Christmas so maybe you've all been able to you know relax a little bit ahead of the the madness that's about to kind of kick off well I mean some of you maybe are quite organized people I mean I'm not an organized person and I know I've said this every year but no I'm not organized I mean you probably are well aware of that but I'm organized in certain aspects of my life but things like Christmas no I'm not organized but I actually love the last minute rush of Christmas. I don't, you know, I don't think I would get the same rush if I was, you know, doing things three months ahead. You know, I mean, I've got some friends who, I mean, they literally start wrapping in like September. I mean, how can that feel festive, you know? And I would then, I would forget what I had bought. I'd forget where I'd put it. I'd lose them. You know, it would be a nightmare. So for me, definitely, I'm, you know, last minute person and that just works best for me um so yeah let me know below what what do you like to do do you like to be way ahead of the curve or do you like the whole you know last minute rush like i do so obviously i have not started my christmas shopping um you know i can't believe we're even actually talking about christmas it's like wow what on earth is going on um it just ugh, it feels like it can't possibly be going to be christmas already it's just shocking how quickly this year's gone and I know I say things like that all the time but honestly time just goes ever faster right there we go so I've glued all my envelopes down so I'm just going to go into the cutting process to get my pockets and like I said I'm actually going to do some um different sizes so you know I've got a variety then to kind of work with so I'm going to do some you know some tall ones some you know smaller ones these ones here the small ones I might even cut down the side so that I've got these as um port yeah portrait yeah portrait pockets sorry I had a bit of a brain fog there thinking oh, is this portrait or landscape yeah portrait pockets might do a couple like that so okay so right apology time so first of all I really apologize I was hoping to obviously get to all of my emails and things whilst I was away on holiday um for anyone who doesn't kind of watch regularly I had been away for two weeks like unexpectedly at the last minute um because my parents couldn't go on their holiday and so rather than obviously lose their money they were able to transfer it to me for a reduced rate to me you know <laughs> so um yeah so my daughter and I went away in place of them and it was with my sisters and things anyway I was hoping to obviously catch up with my emails while I was away however unfortunately I could only get internet on my tablet um I could get it on my laptop but it continually kicked you off continually and it was just so slow it wasn't actually usable so whilst I say I could get it on my laptop what I mean is I could log on 
as if I was going to get it, but actually in practical terms, I then wasn't able to get it because as soon as you came to load any page, it just couldn't load. So I was really gutted because I was hoping to work on some digital things, um, digital kits. I was hoping to get ahead with all my emails and all of that. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to do any of those things whatsoever. Um, I mean, thank goodness I was able to obviously upload my videos every day because I'm able to do that with my iPad rather than my laptop. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, with regards to my laptop, it was a complete waste of time taking it, to be honest. So um, yeah, that was such a shame. So I do apologise. And obviously, since being back, I've been just doing washing and, you know, catching up with like my mum and dad and, you know, my sons and various things. So I haven't now still got onto my laptop. So I can only apologise. I really am so sorry. And of course, I will be getting on to my emails at some point this week. Um, just further on from that, I'm also going to be running a series which I talked about, um, my advent calendar series. So I will be filming that this week. And first of all, I've got a lot of preparation to do for that because you may have followed along. I think it was the year before last I did an advent calendar series where I'm going to sell an item every single day, maybe more than one. Um, of physical items. So I know that lots of people, you know, would like to buy, I don't know, a journal or something like that. And, you know, they can't ever actually manage to get one. Um, so hopefully this will be an opportunity for lots of people to be able to get hold of, you know, a journal or, you know, a kit or anything else. I'm going to have a whole variety of different things in my, in my shop. So, um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to have a standard time of uploading. I need to double check what that time is. I have a funny feeling last time it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, so I will double check that and make sure that is, you know, the, the good time when kind of most people in most countries would be awake to give everybody a kind of fair opportunity. Um, the video will go up at the normal time showing the item that is going to be listed for that day. And then that item will go up later on that day, if you see what I mean. So the video will be uploaded at um, the normal time of 1.30 a.m. GMT. Um, and the item will be uploaded, I think it's about 2.30 in the afternoon GMT. Um, so, yeah, I will clarify all this. I will do a trailer for the, the series and I will clarify, obviously, all the details in there. This is obviously, um, you know, bypassing my normal wait list. So if you are on my waiting list, I do apologise. Um, you are still on my waiting list. And obviously, you know, in the new year, I will obviously, you know, still be going through my normal wait list process. Um, oh, gosh, look at my terrible cutting down there. Um, this is my green buildings uh, paper, by the way. So, yeah, I mustn't forget to tell people the papers because I know that you do like to know. Um, and this is my um, English country garden paper. Uh, yeah, so I will be then, you know, going back to the waiting list as, as normal. So I do apologise, obviously, to those people who are patiently waiting for items. Please don't think that, you know, I've forgotten you. I haven't. Um, but I thought this was a nice opportunity. It was it was nice when I ran it before, and I know that lots of you were really pleased to get, you know, the opportunity to buy something. Um, and there's going to be a whole variety of different things. They're not all going to be the same price mark, if you see what I mean. So there will be a variety of cheaper and more expensive things. So there will be journals, which of course would be, you know, journals and folios would be the most expensive items. But I'm going to also incorporate things or include things like tag bags and kits and things which will obviously be cheaper. So, you know, hopefully there will be a good variety of things, you know, for the maximum people to be able to get something. And, you know, hopefully if, you know, if you wanted something, you would be able to get something. So, yes, that's what I'm going to be kind of really busy doing for the next couple of days. This is also an English country garden, by the way. Um, that's what I'm going to be really busy doing the next couple of days is obviously getting all of the items out that I've got for sale. I obviously still need to make quite a lot of items. 
I did make a few things while I was on holiday, which again, I will be doing a series of some holiday projects, but that will be shown after Christmas now. So, you know, maybe even into the new year. Um, so yeah, that will be basically what's going to obviously, you know, kind of have to take priority this week because um, if I don't film, I won't have the series ready for Thursday, which is obviously the 1st of December, if that makes sense. So yeah, anyway, so that's the plan. But I promise everybody that, you know, it's on my radar that I know that my emails are now, you know, well, like so far behind and I just apologise so much. Um, but yeah, I will be definitely getting to them. It's just a case of like, you know, I need to kind of get the filming done quickly now. Um, so yeah, right, let's just um, get on and stop kind of, stop dribbling on about that. Anyway, so that's that. Um, thank you to everybody who bought one of my physical kits. I really hope that you are loving using them. Um, obviously I have been uploading the Build Your Own Folio series. Uh, I think we've had two episodes so far. Um, now I did talk about this again on my videos whilst I was away. There was one lady who purchased a kit whilst I was away. Um, so, and obviously if that was you, you will know that it was you. I will aim to post that um, today. Obviously, I was not able to post that whilst I was away. And then we got back on Saturday. And of course, the post office hasn't been open since then. Um, so, yeah, I will be posting your kit out, you know, as a, as a priority. So, yeah, thank you so much for, you know, your patience. And I do apologise, obviously, that I wasn't able to post that out, you know, previously. Um, you know, but obviously you only purchased it whilst whilst I was away. So, yeah, just wanted to kind of say that. But, I mean, do be assured that you can obviously craft along with the Build Your Own Folio series. If you did not get a physical kit, you will still be able to craft along with your own supplies. I mean, of course, it may take you slightly longer to gather things and find suitable things that you want to use. Um, you know, it's not going to kind of be maybe such a fast process because all your things won't be there but once you've gathered your supplies of course you can still craft along um you know you can always use substitutes for things that you maybe don't have in your stash you will be able to substitute for other things so please don't be you know put off if you didn't manage to get a kit so obviously there were only you know a few kits available and um it was kind of like a, a trial thing really to see how they went down um oh sorry these this paper was my florentine um florentine papers yeah um so yeah anyway i wanted to kind of see how it went and you know see whether it would be popular or not and touchwood you know it, it did go down well and hopefully you know like i say you're all really really enjoying using it so you know fingers crossed in the new year i will do i will do more of those types of things you know again it did take a long time to obviously put the kits together and to film the series and all of that kind of stuff so i can't promise how long it's going to be before i will do another series like that i can't promise you know how how frequently those types of things will come along um but because i know now that actually it was quite well received and lots of people did want to get a kit even if you weren't able to get one I will hopefully be able to do more in the future um but like I say it's just kind of a you know one of those things that just putting those kits together I mean it might not look like much work although one lovely lady in the comments did say that she could see you know how much thought and effort had gone in and time had gone into creating those kits and it really does you know I mean it doesn't look like much, particularly if you weren't a crafter and you look, you think, well, what? I mean, that's just a bunch of stuff. I mean, how long could it really take to put that together? But it really does take a long time. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, but obviously you'd have to be a crafter probably to to really appreciate that. Right. So this is my amaranthine loveliness um, paper. Now, I'm just going to also give you a quick preview 
my Christmas kit, which again, I was hoping to launch whilst I was away on holiday, but because my laptop wasn't working, I obviously could not finalise it and do it. I will be hopefully putting in my shop. It may even be in there now. Um, but I just want to give you a bit of a preview. Sorry, not, not this blue paper. That's the amaranthine loveliness. Um, but this is one of the pages. This is another page. It's all about the um, Christmas story. So, you know, the birth of Jesus mixed in with the lovely woodland animals. So I really hope that you love the kit. Like I say, it may even be up in my shop now. Um, depends how I get on today, really. I may not have had time to put it up, but if it is, then, you know, it, it is. Um, it's going to be called uh, Silent Night. So, yeah, I just wanted to give you a sneak preview, really. And then I'm going to just use this, I think, to cover one of these one of these envelopes. So it's such a pretty kit. And thank you so much for your lovely suggestions um, for, you know, for themes for the next Christmas or, you know, for this Christmas kit. Because I know I talked about before it's really hard coming up with ideas, you know, because this is now my um, fourth, I think, Christmas kit. And obviously coming up with, you know, four different completely unique kits, it's, it's quite hard to come up with another idea. So thank you so much. And lots of you did suggest the Christmas story. So, you know, the birth of Jesus and um, yeah, that, that lovely um, kind of nativity scene. So I wanted to do something like that. The kit that I've put together, um, it's hopefully going to be a kit that could go either very shabby chic or very traditional colours with the reds and the greens and things like that. Um, you know, I will obviously come along and do a proper preview of it. Um, this is just a kind of bit of a peek, you know, just quickly now. Um, but yeah, I think there would be an opportunity to go quite shabby chic and do it quite pale in, you know, pastels and things, or there would be an opportunity to go very, um, you know, bold in Christmas colours and golds and things like that. So yeah, I really hope that you love it. I mean, really, really, really loved how it turned out. So yeah, I had a really nice time working on it. And like I say, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who made those wonderful suggestions because it really is much appreciated so yeah thank you so much so just a quick chit chat really about our holiday so yes we had um a nice time so yeah it was um it was a nice time went with my two sisters my eldest sister and her husband and their son um their son he's in his 20s now um and then my younger sister went with her and her son so yes we had a nice time and it was lovely to spend you know time together you know us guys um together because you know you don't really kind of see much of one another because you're all busy working and things like that so I see quite a bit of my younger sister um but mainly just because our children are kind of the same age you know her um youngest child is a very similar age to my daughter so, you know, we kind of see each other quite a bit. We've also both, you know, our lives have kind of followed a similar path of late. You know, she got a divorce recently, as obviously I did. Um, so, yeah, but my elder sister, you know, her life is very different. Her children are kind of grown up and, you know, I mean, obviously, yeah, to kind of just um, work demands and things like that just mean that we don't really see each other that much so it was really nice to kind of hang out and you know have a nice time together and see more of one another right oh my goodness i've just looked at the time oh i can't actually see whether i think i, I think it actually says 45 minutes would you believe oh i can't see the time properly right i'm going to just quickly glue a couple of these down i must have been chatting for such a long time this is what i mean i yeah because i'm out of the zone now with filming I can't even gauge at all how long my video was it felt like I hadn't been filming for that long well maybe to you guys it maybe felt like I've been filming forever listening to me going on and on but yeah it's um yeah there we go so and my Youngest son, um, he obviously started his job recently, so he is still, you know, he's still obviously doing that. And um, yeah, Touchwood, I think it's going fine. 
I was very upset really that he couldn't come on holiday with us you know because obviously he'd started work so yeah that was a shame and yeah really um you know missed the boys so much so yeah that was a shame um but lovely to be home again you know and see them again so and you know hey I mean who doesn't love it when their mum goes away so you know but yeah, he's he's still doing well. I can't think, I think he's been there for like four weeks now. It's just flying by. But um, yeah, I think he's he's settled in okay and quite enjoying it. So thank you so much to all your well wishes for him. And thank you so much to everybody's well wishes to my mum um, for her hip um, replacement procedure. Now, my mum probably won't appreciate me, you know, telling everybody this, but my mum doesn't watch my channel, so she will not know that I have... <laughs> that I have divulged this information. Um, she is struggling a lot at the moment um, with terrible anxiety connected with having the procedure. Now, I've told her and everybody else has told her, you know, I've relayed a few of your lovely comments where lots of you have shared either your own experiences or, you know, perhaps your mum's or, you know, um, other relatives or friends' experiences of hip replacement operations nothing is kind of like putting her mind at rest she doesn't really know what it is that's upsetting her so much um but she is feeling very uh, very anxious i suppose so she has been struggling unfortunately so she's not feeling herself at all um and kind of hiding herself away a little bit it's got to be said um so obviously i saw them when we got back you know her and my dad and um yeah, I mean, bless her, she's not herself. So thank you so much to all your lovely well wishes. At the moment, she's at a stage where she can't physically make herself go for the operation. Um, she doesn't know why. She, you know, she can't kind of... Yeah, she can't put her finger on what is causing her to feel that way. She doesn't really know. She knows it's irrational. She knows, you know, it's it's a routine thing she knows lots of people have it and you know all of those things but anxiety is like that isn't it you know it's often completely unexplainable and that's where she's at at the moment so you know thank you so much to all you lovely people who've sent lovely kind wishes to her um the situation is like i say unfortunately at this point in time she can't actually make herself go for the procedure so you know um it's you know they're going to have to pay privately to get it done because the nhs waiting list was just you know i think like 18 months or an incredibly long time and my mum was in quite a lot of pain but she actually can't make herself actually have it done so they did have a procedure booked she's had to cancel it because she said she physically can't make herself actually even walk into the hospital um, so yeah, she is really struggling and, you know, nothing anyone's saying or anything else is making any difference. She, you know, she knows it's kind of like inevitable. She's got to have it done. It's not like a sort of, oh, can I, can I manage to not have it done? She can't because I mean, she's actually got like a, you know, a wheelchair half the time now. She can barely manage to walk anywhere, you know, very far. I mean, other than kind of, I don't know, in in their house, which actually I got a feeling even in their house she's using crutches. I didn't really notice because she was obviously sat down. Um, but yeah, you know, and obviously when I left, I said, don't get up. So I'm not really sure that I saw her moving around. But, you know, she's in a lot of, of pain and discomfort and, you know, she can't not have it done. And she does know that. But having said that, making herself go and have it done she cannot, you know, she just can't, she can't do that. So, yeah, she, um, yeah, that's where we're at with that. So I will keep you posted. Hopefully, eventually, she will, um, you know, overcome her anxiety. She's got an appointment with a hypnotherapist. Um, I think it's next week. Uh, she's got some medication from the doctor to, you know, help to try and, like, you know, quash some of her anxiety. I don't think they're helping a great deal yet. She said they're helping a little bit, but not enough. Um, 
so we shall see but yeah so unfortunately we're kind of no further ahead so thank you so much to everyone who did send lovely well wishes to my mum for her procedure at this point in time she is not in a situation where she's likely to be having it um but hey uh, you know anything could change i mean as soon as kind of she feels the effects of her medication fully maybe she will just suddenly then you know be fine to be able to have it done i i don't know um so we shall see and it's you know she hasn't really suffered with anxiety like that before this is kind of out the blue it's you know she doesn't understand it herself why she's suddenly got things out of you know kind of out of proportion as she, you know in her own words as she would say you know she can't rationalize it she can't explain why she's got like this um it just seems to come completely out of nowhere but she you know she can't get her you know to get to grips with it so yeah it's just you know it's a shame really because obviously she does need to have that procedure and she does know that but at the moment she, you know she just can't she can't make herself do it right now i'm just going to move the t uh time the clock slightly oh do you know it, it must have said 35 minutes not 45 minutes so i actually have got longer than i thought anyway um <laughs> so yeah i've mucked up my filming and now mucked up my timing right let's pull in the pockets that we have done obviously i have folded these i haven't now you know completed those um but let's decorate one so or we might we might decorate two as we've got quite a bit of time because i'd you know miscalculated so let's take this one now i've got here some clusters i think beside me right let's just see if we could use any of these oh and i've got a bit of a snippet roll as well going on so right Ooh, it's quite nice on there, doesn't it? All that. Okay. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? I've gone cluster crazy lately. I, um, yeah, I just can't seem to kind of live without clusters. They're just like the um, quickest way to decorate anything, aren't they? Clusters and snippet rolls, to me, they're kind of very much interlinked because I think they can work very much in the same way. Um, so this is actually a snippet roll, but I feel it operates a bit like a cluster, if you see what I mean, because now it's torn down from the snippet roll. It very much really is resembling a cluster, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, that looks really pretty on there, doesn't it? And then I'm thinking maybe a little bit of lace because you can just never have enough lace let's just take that down okay oh and thank you so much to everyone who has made a purchase during my black friday um discount um that i ran and um yeah i mean thank you so much and i you know i hope that you got some nice things and that you were you know pleased with your purchases um, it's always one of those difficult things because, to be honest, I really do try and keep my prices, you know, super low throughout the whole year. So, you know, my discount maybe didn't sound so very generous as, you know, as some shops, but I feel like my stuff is very, very um, affordable all year round. So I did want to obviously give a discount, but, you know, because my things tend to only be one or two pounds anyway... I was kind of limited with the scope that I had to offer, you know, a significant um, discount, if that makes sense. I mean, I saw obviously some shops offering, you know, 50% and things like that. But, you know, when your things are very, very low price in the first place, you're kind of a bit more limited for where you can go. So, um, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who did, you know, make a purchase and, um, you know, yeah I hope that you you know appreciate that obviously you know I do try and keep my prices you know very 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 affordable all year round you know so generally I don't really offer discounts or sales generally because I like to think that things are just very affordable all the time um but that being said hey who doesn't love a bargain so you know I wanted to obviously participate in the the black friday sales but you know it's kind of tricky when your prices are pretty low in the first place to um 
to go much lower really right and just having a quick look here for some ribbon I've got this yellowy color oops sorry I just sorry I just did not the camera see I'm just so out of practice now just you know two weeks and that's it I think I've never done this before oh that's pretty isn't it right okay let's just take that so these are just a bunch of wax seals that I have done um you know uh yeah what's the word made made that looks very very pretty doesn't it so I'm just going to glue this down now unfortunately somebody has been in my room and pinched my um uh what do you call it extension block whilst I've been away so I now can't plug my hot glue gun in so I'm a little bit lost without it it's got to be said so I'm going to have to just glue this down with my wet glue I would normally use um, my hot glue for gluing down a great big bulky cluster like this um and especially when it's going on to lace because I say all the time don't I that you know that's going to hold the lace in place um obviously because somebody's you know pinched my my um extension block I don't have that now which is annoying it's got to be said um but you know that's fine so I'm just going to instead have to use my wet glue like that and just hope for the best now I haven't ever stuck a wax seal down with wet glue it's got to be said so I'm um, yeah really hoping that this is going to work if it doesn't I can obviously then once I find my extension block I did look in other bedrooms but yeah couldn't find it anywhere so who knows who borrowed it and what for but anyway so that's that pocket isn't that just so 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 pretty just gorgeous isn't it so I won't move it too much because obviously those bits might drop off because they're just glued with the wet glue rather than the hot glue but I'll just put that to one side and I think we should have time for another one because you know sorry I'm going to have to move my camera up again because I've knocked it now um yeah let's do another one now, I'm wondering if I could do a Christmas one. Oh, I haven't printed my Christmas bits on um you know thicker paper yet so I won't be able to do that unfortunately perhaps we'll do one of these tiny ones so this is that amaranthine loveliness paper so you know very different look obviously to that first one I've got some lilac lace here which might look quite nice oh, yeah that does look nice so right let's just put that down okay oops like that and then what should we have on there I was yeah I was planning on putting a cluster on but to be honest I'm not sure that's the right cluster for that I saw something else that I thought this would look fantastic on I mean to be honest it would even look nice on the Christmas paper but um oh do you know when when they were sat there I thought oh that would look good on there and now I don't know which one I was thinking I don't know don't know now so yeah none of those none of those obviously uh maybe I don't have a cluster that would be quite suitable for this mm. well, that's a shame isn't it because I was all about the you know the easy crafting they're just going with a cluster because it's just really um a quick way to embellish and decorate isn't it no, nope, not going to be able to use any of those because none are suitable. Right, let's have a look and see. I have got one of these. This is from my Halloween kit, left over from that. Okay. Okay, dokey. Oh, do you know they've been doing roadworks down our road and when we came back from our holiday we drove down our road and I thought oh for, you know thank goodness they've finished doing the um the roadworks and then would you believe it we got closer and I thought oh for goodness sake they had not finished doing them at all in fact they're now right outside my house 
literally right outside. Although, that being said, I mean, they are right outside, but I actually haven't really heard them today. So, yeah, they're right outside, but they're obviously on a very long tea break <laughs> at the moment because I haven't actually heard them at all during this whole video. So, hopefully you guys haven't heard them. Oops, struggling to shut my drawer. I'm just looking for things from my pile of stuff behind me to see if I've got anything that I can use. Um, ooh, what about that? That's quite pretty, isn't it? So if I just ink up the, um, the pocket itself, because obviously this is quite heavily inked and looks quite grungy. This looks very bright in comparison, so I just ink around here, make this look a bit more grungy as well. Oh dear, very juicy bit in that corner, hopefully would be covered up by the time we stick the heart on. Yeah, luckily, luckily for me. Okay. Oh, how pretty does that look? So that's just a top loading pocket there. So again, obviously I don't have my hot glue. I'm just going to have to trust my wet glue. I mean, the wet glue will hold this. It definitely will. I wasn't too sure about the um, wax seal because I've never stuck a wax seal down with wet glue. I've always only used the hot glue. Um, but I'm sure it will be fine. You know, I've seen other people use wet glue for their wax seals and it has seemed to work. So um, I'm sure it will be fine. I just haven't used it myself. Um, Okay, let's cut that down. There we go. How pretty does that look? Let's check whether we need a purple flower on there. Oops, no, at all. Could have that purple one there. Let's see. Hmm. I mean, it does look quite pretty. I can't help but feel like I would like one here as well. I doubt I've got two lying around on my desk. That would be far too convenient, wouldn't it? Yeah, I can't see a second one. So perhaps I'll just go for this one. So I'm just going to glue this down a bit more here. So that hopefully this is going to glue across the, you know, onto the lace and the, the envelope. There we go. How pretty is that? And it looks very different, doesn't it, to the first one? So, yeah, really pretty. Oh, that, look, that was those other pockets that I said about for that cluster with the owl. So let's just see, what's the time? Oh, 52, I, I can squeeze in another one. This is only because I mis, misviewed the time, you know, I thought it had said earlier um, 45 and it had said 35. So I've got, you know, a few minutes to spare. But that must be the pocket that I had spotted and thought, oh, that would just look perfect on there. And it really does look good, doesn't it? So, yeah, let's just have that on there. And I'm actually thinking perhaps we could have a wax seal as well. Maybe in the corner. I mm, wonder if we could use that same yellowy colour ribbon or whether that would be completely wrong. Let's have a look. Oh, it's a bit yellow, isn't it? Yeah, let me just see, see if I've got some pink ribbon. There we go. Oh, how pretty and gorgeous does that look? I don't even feel it needs any lace down the side, which that's unusual for me, isn't it? But yeah, it looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So let's just put that down there. Like that. Okay, and then this here. Let's just pop that down there, like that. Okay. There we go. My goodness how yummy does that look and I mean that just was like thrown together but my goodness it looks so pretty doesn't it I mean that came together in literally seconds literally seconds 
So yeah, really, really, really gorgeous. Right, okay, let's see how many we have done. So we have done undecorated. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've also got one, two, three, four, five. Five ready to decorate. I have to say, I think my camera's actually dropping down now. Um, and then I've actually got three decorated ones. So, I mean, that was pretty good mass make, wasn't it? We've really made quite an abundance of them. Um, and decorated three, which we don't normally decorate really, you know, any other than just one for sort of demonstration purposes. So, yeah, I hope that you like them. Um, you know, like I say, it does not get any easier than this. You know, it's just the easiest project ever. Um, but yeah, I hope that you like them. Obviously, if you're looking forward to my Christmas kit, um, you know, have a look and see whether it's in my shop. It will definitely be in there within the next couple of days if it's not in there, you know, already by now. And yeah, keep your eye out for my Christmas advent calendar. I will do a trailer letting everybody know exactly the timings and things that things will be listed. Um, and other than that, like I say, there will be a whole bunch of different things, all different price brackets. So hopefully kind of, you know, something to fit, you know, most budgets. So thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I hope everyone has a fantastic week and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.